Hello everyone, I'm Vasundhra, AVP Marketing and Sales, and your moderator for today's session. I welcome you all to an exciting webinar on localization opportunities in Indic and Southeast Asian languages by the thought leaders and experts from q Infotech. All participants are on mute by default. In case of any questions, please use the questions tab. For any generic discussions, go to the chat bot in the panel on the right-hand side. From the pool of speakers, that we have at QInfoTech, I have Rajni and Pan with me today. Rajni has more than 17 years of experience and is the Vice President of Global Testing Services. She is the flag bearer of the thought leadership at QInfoTech and an avid speaker and evangelist at various international and domestic conferences. Irfan is from the quality engineering team and assists ISVs to localize their flagship products. He also recently addressed the world leaders at the UN General Assembly on how localization of technologies can promote multilinguism and multiculturalism. Both Irfan and Rajni will share their views and experiences on how small efforts of localization can make a considerable impact on your brand. Over to you, Rajni and Irfan. Thank you, Vasundra, for the introduction. Welcome again, one and all, to this webinar on localization opportunities in the Indian and Southeast Asian market. As we start off, I want to quickly present to you all the simple but very powerful example of this advertisement for no specific brand. If you just follow the sequence of images here, as you would know globally, while most markets read left to right, there are a good handful of them who also read right to left. The sequence of images presented here make complete sense for a market that reads left to right where a person is exhausted in a desert, drinks cola, and is energized to run again. Whereas the same sequence, if read in a right-to-left market, completely shatters the meaning that we are trying to convey, where a person is actively running, he drinks cola, and drops them. In localization, therefore, it's not just about straightforward translation. It's about the market. It's about the social cultural elements. It's about the linguistic considerations. All of these nuances are key, and these are what we will cover in today's session, where the agenda will focus on the Indic and Southeast Asian market. We will talk about what this market covers, what are the design, social, cultural, and linguistic considerations to keep in mind, because this three-pronged approach promotes for comprehensive localization in all markets, more so for these markets that have inherent nuances. The examples and points we present will give you a comprehensive view into not just the engineering aspects, but the business and linguistic considerations as well to keep in mind. As we start off, let's first look at the overall market size. The last decade has been a huge, has witnessed a huge digital revolution globally, and we all know this. The Southeast Asian market is no exception out here. Given the populous global base, the numbers have been booming, but the digital market here was estimated at $50 billion in 2015. And of this size, it's only 10% that is the English product market. This number, 50 billion, is expected to reach a $300 billion market by 2025, with about $100 billion market by 2019. Now, this is a huge market, of which 90% accounts for the localized sector. So let's dive into looking at what it takes to take on the right localization for these markets, looking at all of these nuances as opportunity rather than as challenges. So let's take a quick look at a sample set of some of the languages that we're talking about out here. So if, we're, if we really look at this, we have all the way from Indic languages covering for the Indian market, such as Hindi, Tamil, Malayalam, to the Southeast Asian market of Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Burma, so on and so forth, making this list of accounts for the locales and dialects, accounting for a large number of these small countries that belong to this region of Indic and Southeast Asia. So with that, I will pass the baton to Irfan, who will now walk us through the business considerations, engineering considerations, and linguistic considerations to keep in mind, more specifically for these markets, but which are equally applicable when it comes to localization for any market overall. Over to you, Irfan. Thank you, Rajini. Hi, all. 
So I'll be talking about uh, here design considerations, sociocultural elements that impact design and linguistic considerations. So to make it easy, I have divided them in three parts. So let's discuss the first part, design considerations. So it is really important for us to know that the, some of the Indic and Southeast Asian languages are uh, more verbose than others. That means the strings will either expand or contract based on, based on the language structures. So we, that's why we need a very responsive, flexible and dynamic design to accommodate all sorts of uh, characters in, in, the, uh, in the design of our UAE while developing our applications. And if we don't consider this, the text will go out of the box and, and they will truncate and often become functionally dead. Like Middle East and North African countries, UAE mirroring is also there in Indic and Southeast Asian market as well, because there are a list of languages that are written from uh, right to left order. For example, in Indic, Urdu, Hindi, Urdu, Sindhi, Kashmiri, and in uh, Southeast Asian languages, Bhasha Malayu is written from right to left order. So it is really important to us to understand the UAE mirroring. By Dai is for bi-directional text. So if our application is multilingual and covering Indic and Southeast Asian market, we need to have the support of bi di text as well in the text field and other edit options. Unlike European languages, the structures of Indic and Southeast Asian languages is completely different. For example, uh, the Thai language, there is no concept of white spaces to differentiate uh, between words. So there is a whole new, uh, new concept of new features uh, for paragraph and justifications and alignment. So how we are going to design icons for these special structural level features that are there in Indic and Southeast Asian market. So let's discuss this in detail with examples. As I said earlier that some of the Indic and Southeast Asian languages are more verbose than other. So if we don't have the responsive, flexible uh, design for the UI or of our, of our applications, the text will go out of the box or button design in the UI. So here I have taken a very simple English string that is retry and is quite often used for digital payment app where the transaction fails and in other uh, applications. So you can see here, if it is translated in Hindi, you can see and Khmer, you can see how the text is expanding both vertically and horizontally. Here you can see in Bengali, in Urdu, in Thai, Punjabi, Sinhala, you can see the text is expanding horizontally so much and in Malayalam also. So imagine, if we don't have the responsive UI, all the text of these languages that are there in Indic and Southeast Asian market, they will go out of the button area that is designed. So most probably they will be functionally dead and uh, the functional and there will be a huge impact on functionality. So it is really important to understand this dynamic while localizing our product in Indic and Southeast Asian market. Similarly, we need to have dynamic design for the UI of our applications. So uh, when I say dynamic, you should, uh, it means that you should have bandwidth to rearrange various elements like logo, branding items, and other, uh, and other uh, greetings. So here I have taken a very simple app, paper scorer, and I have taken the welcome screen. So here you can see the structure of the language, English language, and the structures of the South uh, uh, Indic languages, that is Hindi and Urdu. So imagine if you don't have the bandwidth of rearranging the logo, and other branding items, the whole meaning is going to be changed because the structure of English and other Indic languages is completely different. So here in English, the sentence is starting with a verb and ends with an object that is the logo of the product. So if we don't rearrange the 
uh, the logo and other branding items, the whole meaning will change. So here, as you can see in Hindi and Urdu, so rather than application welcoming a user, user himself will come welcoming the application and the host becomes guest and the guest becomes host. Similarly, you can see the other UI elements. So it is really important to have dynamic UI, uh, dynamic design for the UI or of, of, of our application. If we categorize the world languages, we can put them in, in three categories. The first set of categories that are written from left to right order. And the second set of categories that are written from right to left order. And there is a third category also that is written from top to bottom, like Japanese and Mongolian. So UI mirroring is for third set, uh, second set of uh, languages that are written from right to left order. So you need to mirror the whole UI or of our applications to to localize in that particular market. So I so to make it easy, I have taken a very simple Google search home page. So here you can see when the when the same page is mirrored for RTL languages, how these elements are going to be reverted. So observe these elements in the mirrored page. So here they have come on this side and they, this came on this side. And we need to be very careful while mirroring the UI of our applications that never and ever the brand name and other logo items should not be mirrored as the case here, it has been mirrored. So it should be intact. So I have another example of Twitter's login page in Urdu. So here you can see everything has been mirrored but the logo of the Twitter is still intact. Even the beak of the bird is on left side. Ideally, it should have been right side because uh, it is an RTL page, a mirrored UI. But that is not the case. So these even minor and minute level of thing should be taken very carefully. And we sh in, an, in any case, we should never mirror the logo of our application. By die support. By die stand for bi-directional text. So any character, any Unicode character has three values. Either it will be left to right or right to left order. Or it, it should have a characteristic of being neutral from either when the when the host of characters will be RTL, it will align to RTL, and when the host of characters will be LTR, it will align to LTR. So if we don't have by dice support in our applications, particularly in text areas, there will be a lot of challenges for neutral characters. As you can see here, when typing Urdu, the neutral characters are going out of the context and changing the whole meaning. And similarly, on an RTL page, when the English and other LTR letters are typing, the again, neutral characters going out of the context. So if we don't consider this by day support, there will be a lot of challenges for the users, uh, particularly in Indic and Southeast Asian countries. The structures of Indic and Southeast Asian languages is completely different from the English and other European languages. For example, English and other European languages, they don't have concept of half letters. But half letters are very widely used in Indic and Southeast Asian languages, and they have a lot of rules and regulations when the half letters should join the next letter and when they should not join the next letter. And for that, we use zero width joiner and zero width non joiner. So, and there are a lot of other structural level features there in Indic and Southeast Asian languages. So, how we are going to design icons for these structural level features? so that they are localized and they are self-exploratory and users don't get confused. So here I have taken the example of a very leading application in the market. So you can see how the designers have smartly designed the binding direction. 
for an RTL page that will be used for RTL languages and for Japanese languages that is written from top to by uh, top to bottom, but the binding direction is RTL. So you can see how the smart applications they are designing icons that, that are self-exploratory and also users don't get confused. So we need to be very careful while designing icons for these structural level features. And we should ensure that they are uh, understandable by the set of market we are targeting. So this was the design considerations. So let's focus on social cultural elements that impact design. So here are some elements, navigation, gestures, symbols, colors, icons, and images. So let's explore them in detail with examples. So navigation is a very important feature in any applications to access information and navigate the UI of any product. And if our application, and if we are targeting to make our application multilingual, particularly in Indic and Southeast Asian uh, market, we need to consider the navigational aspect in the while designing the UI of our application. Because RTL languages has altogether different navigation aspects. So here you can see the go back for LTR languages is completely different for RTL languages. Similarly, in case of pagination, what will be the first page will be the last page for RTL languages, and what will be the next will be the previous page for RTL languages. So we need to have this dynamics in our mind while localizing our product for Indic and Southeast Asian um, market and this navigational aspect. Gestures are now, now it is widely used in applications, but we need to be very careful while selecting gestures in, in our applications because there are a lot of gestures they considered very obscene and they are not socially acceptable also and they have different meaning in different countries so we need to be very careful and we we we, we should try our best to avoid such gestures that has different meaning and confusing meaning in different countries so there are a lot of gestures uh, korna gestures mozza gestures double mozza big gestures five fingers gestures, but I have taken a very simple gesture here, that is the ring symbol. And this is very widely used in US and Latin American countries. And it means it's perfect, okay. But the same gestures when it comes in uh, European countries like France, it means zero, nothing. And the same gesture in when it comes to Middle Eastern countries and other Mediterranean countries, it has a very, very rude, and very obscene uh, meaning to, and there people used to refer someone as homosexual and sodomite. So we need to be very careful while selecting gestures for our application, particularly if we are localizing this in Indic and Southeast Asian market. Similarly, like gestures, symbols also play a very important role in enhancing the usability of our applications, but like gestures, we need to be very careful while selecting symbols. Because like gestures, symbols also have different meaning in different countries. And I have taken a very simple example here, the symbol of owl. Symbol of owl in US considered as the symbol of knowledge most in most of the US and Latin American market. But the same symbol in India, it's considered as the symbol of fool. And similarly, in most of the Southeast Asian countries, it's considered the symbol of bad fortune. So again, we need to be very careful while selecting symbols uh, to use in, our, in the UI of our applications. And we try to our best to not use such confusing symbols. When we look at colors, we just only think of from beautification aspect and aesthetic point of the color only. But, and often we forget that colors also have meaning and they have very strong meaning. So while localizing our product, 
and while selecting colors for particular market in this market we need to be very careful while selecting and the particularly the meaning of the color otherwise we uh, we end up being a big blender or undermine undermine our brand so i i have taken the example a very simple example of a beverages company though this is not related to our industry but there is a great lesson for us so the designers it is said that designers uh, globally change the royal blue color to light blue color. The, and it is said that the light blue color is associated with, uh, with death in most of the Southeast Asian countries. And people say that it has a very great impact in the sale of the product. So you can see how the colors are playing a very important role uh, even uh, in making a, pro a particular product successful and not successful in a particular market so we need to be very careful while selecting colors and the meaning of the colors uh, particularly in this market because i'll give you the example the, the red color is the symbol of strength in china but the same color has different meaning in us and other latin um, uh, latin american countries and they are considered as the symbol of danger and similarly uh, Yellow color is the symbol of strength in most of the Middle Eastern countries, in like in Saudi Arabia and other countries. But the same color has different meaning in other different countries. White color is widely used in Europe and other countries as the color of happiness and used in most happy occasions. But the same color has different meaning in Southeast Asian countries and it's considered the color of mourning. So we need to be very careful uh, while adopting the color, particularly in localized market. Icons are also very important uh, features. And now it is very widely used in the UI of our applications. So while selecting, while designing uh, icons for any features, particularly for localization features, we need to be very careful because certain icons may be equally uh, understandable, may not be equally understandable in another market. In some scenarios, they may be confusing. So we need to be very uh, careful uh, while designing icons, particularly if we are designing icons for linguistic features of a particular market. So I again, I have taken an example of a leading product. So you can see the designers here, how smartly they are tweaking the design to, to give a very localized uh, aspect in their particular art, uh, icon. So here you can see how the designers have smartly put an arrow in the type tool to tell the users that the text will flow from right to left order. And similarly, they have again put an arrow to tell the users that the type on a path tool, uh, the text will flow from right to left order here. Similarly, you can see how the designers have smartly placed a vertical uh, arrow key to tell the users that the text will flow from top to bottom. So, so see, we need to again have such kind of concept in our mind to design uh, icons that are localized and very clear and self-exploratory so that users don't get confused. As, as I have shown the examples, how successfully the designers here have designed uh, the icons. So we need to be very careful uh, while in this aspect, in this particular element. As the saying goes, an image translate thousand words. Looking at this benefit, our software industry is also adopting image-based technique to enhance the usability of our softwares. But again, like other elements like gestures, icons, symbols, we again here, we need to be very careful while selecting images and we should avoid using controversial images or uh, country fla or flags related to a particular country or icons related to a particular religion or community. Because, and we should try our best to use neutral images 
or images related to nature or other um, other aspects so here again i have taken an example though the, this is related to a beverages company but there is a great example for our software industry as well so henken beer was the leading sponsor in world saucer cup and the designers they came up with a nice idea of putting all participating countries flag on the bottle of their beer and the saudi arabia was also one of the participants in that saucer cup but the moment uh, the flags uh, were printed on the bottles and they went into the market a lot of users raised complaint and the henican immediately take this into account and they had to recollect all the bottle and reprint it with different design so here you can see because of lack of doing market research and uh, comprehensive r and d or uh, or not taking the professional help how this kinds of in, uh, instances undermine the brand so we need to be very careful while selecting images in our in the ui of our applications and most probably we should seek the professional help who can do r and d uh, and select images related to that particular market so that it play a very good role in enhancing the usability of your product in that particular market so the, this was the second part the elements the social cultural elements that impact the design so let's focus the third part linguistic consideration so in this we talk about how it is important for us to understand the structure grammatical structure of indic and southeast asian languages because they are completely different from uh, english and other european languages in context translation is a very important uh, area to look at particularly if we are using machine translations or translation memories because generally machine translation often goes out of the context uh translation while translating the ui of our applications gender rules are completely different here uh in this uh market um in these languages uh, i'll explain this with example in the upcoming slides similarly sorting searching and indexing so i'll give you i'll give you a simple example uh nepali hindi marathi and konkani they all these languages they use a single script that is called devanagari script but they all have different sorting searching and indexing uh, mechanism because the l la character that is equal to l is falling on different places in hindi and in different places in marathi so if we don't consider this dynamic in our applications uh, and we don't enable this difference in our applications so our applications particularly related to uh, financial apps or statistics will sort or search various uh, elements differently and user will get confused and they, they end up uh, searching different data set and different sorting different element similarly singular dual and plural rules are completely different uh, in this market uh lexical differences are also very different for example capitalization small cap lower cap might be very important feature for uh, english and other roman based languages but again these features have zero significance in indic and southeast asian market because they all have different uh, rules um, and their own native rules for example alif hamza final ya and so on so we need to be very uh, careful uh, of these linguistic linguistic considerations while uh, localizing our app in indic and southeast asian market so let's explain uh, let's talk about in detail with examples in the upcoming slide so here uh, here you can see i have taken a very simple two sentences to demonstrate how there is a di gender difference between english and other roman based languages and indic and southeast asian languages so here i have taken two sentences in english and the moment i translate it uh, from google translate from english to malay and again from malay to english here you can see the gender of the doctor has changed so a female doctor became a male doctor and and if 
and a female and a male teacher became a female teacher so if we don't understand these gender dynamics we will end up doing big blunders while using machine translation in our applications similarly there is a there is a instances of out of context translation in indic and southeast asian market uh, particularly if we are using machine translations or translation memory because generally if a, if a manual translator they will understand if a particular terminology is used in what context for example cat tools in translation field cat tool is used for computer aided translation tools but a tra but a machine translation will not understand that context and it simply translate it as an animal cat animal and similarly it has been observed and i have observed this while testing applications uh, characters uh, in video editing applications was translated as letters while there is no context here because characters are different uh, that are used in video applications that are used for movies and other uh, cinema and letters are used in word processing uh, field and similarly uh, black plat in accessories the black plat is used for pair of shoes shoes but translators uh, particularly machine tra a, a manual translator will understand the dynamic that this is used for shoes market but machine translation won't understand this and they end up translating as black apartments so you can see how context is really important um, particularly if we are using machine translation consistency in maintaining when to translate particular word when to transliterate and when to transcreate is a very uh, is a very challenging issue here in indic and southeast asian market and it has been observed that most of the translators they end up translating everything for example it has been observed that most of the translators often they translate words like email into hindi so they end up translating it as anu dog and how many people know what is anu dog so we need to be very so in that case it is simple uh, the translators should translate rate it as email like here in the example uh, school has been transliterated just as it is in hindi so we need to be very careful of three t's when to translate particular word and when to transliterate and when to transcreate interoperability is a very important feature in indic and southeast asian market because here almost every user is multilingual and they are at least know three four languages so if we don't give interoperability feature non native users of that particular language will find it real tough so here i will give an example so here you can see the malayalam translator have translated everything into malayalam so the non native user of malayalam will find it real tough to come out of the malayalam version of the app and to change it to the version of, to change it to the language of their choice as the case here so it is really important uh, in to give a comprehensive and seamless interoperability features in in our app so that non native users they can change the language as the case here in the right side so it is advisable to have soft string in english so that the non native users can understand the language and they can switch it very easily and seamlessly so this was the third part linguistic consideration and now solutions so generally in software industry we follow these cultural and theoretical frameworks to to collect the culture and language and language and market specific data from these market so for example theoretical frameworks like edward t hall's cultural iceberg model play a very important role uh, wherein he talks about uh, overt issues and covert issues 
And similarly, Edward T. Halls also give uh, differentiate markets between high context market and low context market. So in high context market, generally uh, Indic and Southeast Asian market, wherein you can do a trade deal of millions rupees uh, sitting on a phone, but that is not possible there in low context market, wherein you need to sign MOUs, sign agreement and do a lot of paperwork. Similarly, Gerth, Gerth Hofti's cultural dimensions, wherein talk about power distances, hierarchies, and masculinity and femininity. So these uh, behavioral things play a very important role in users' behavior. And we need to adopt, uh, and generally we adopt that using these theoretical frameworks, we collect the user's behavior and implement them uh, in our usability and, and in our UI. But unfortunately, uh, these, theoretical frameworks that are widely used in localizing products in other uh, particularly developed markets, they often don't play a significant role in Indic and Southeast Asian market. So here I will give you a very simple case study of Amazon. So the designer here designed a very uh, good search glass. And the moment the product went into the Indian market, the users find it really confusing. And they initially thought, thought is as a ping pong. And they were struggling to search products. Later on, the marketing team realized this fact and the, and the designers redesigned the search glass and they put a big bar and the search glass is there. And also to enhance the UI more, they have placed a native uh, soft string tooltip that is equal to search, Dhudye. Now the users find it really intuitive and seamless and they started searching the product of their choice. So as you can see uh, how those uh, theoretical frameworks that we generally use for localizing in developed markets often don't play a significant role in Indic and Southeast Asian market. Moving on, Rajini will tell you what can be done in this regard. Thank you, Irfan. Thank you for walking us through all of the nuances. Let's now look at what really can be done to ensure comprehensive and appropriate localization efforts, especially for these challenging markets, such as the Indic and the Southeast Asian market. Firstly, understand the market, understand its potential, the user base, and the nuances that you are dealing with. And hopefully, to that extent, the examples and the pointers that Irfan has given you over the last hour has thrown a lot of light. Look at this not just as an engineering challenge and opportunity, but really as a business engineering and as a linguistic opportunity where you cannot rely just on language expertise, but you really need to bring in native language expertise. Because by doing this, you are one step closer to ensuring that the cultural elements are also accommodated in your localization effort. To be able to bring in the cultural soft power, definitely leverage the power of the phone. So the simple reason that you may not be able to keep all of the local expertise internally, it may not even be feasible, it may not even make business sense. Whereas when you leverage uh, you know, a pool of people like the crowd, the crowd test effort is a very mature practice today. For example, we have been helping several organizations on this front in putting together a crowd effort specific to the linguistic expertise. You can also partner with organizations so that you can leverage their scale, expertise, and flexibility. For example, you may need the language expertise. So, so you may ask, why can't I just keep this expertise internally in my organization? Very well, you could do so if that makes business sense and if there's ample amount of work pretty much the entire year. But you see, for the most part, language expertise specifically native language expertise, is required only for a few months in a year. So that being the case, partner, I can for sure speak from our own expertise and experience that we've been helping several organizations, both you know, fortune companies as well as startups, in their journey towards localization, incorporating the linguistic expertise as well, uh, by enabling them to bring in the scale and flexibility that they need. So in summary, what are we looking at in terms of takeaways? 
Linguistic and cultural elements have a huge role to play in the effective localization process. Start off firstly with stakeholder buy-in and sensitization. More often than not, this is not very well implemented, primarily because stakeholders don't necessarily understand the potential and nuances. So start off with sensitizing them, work top down. Like any other business and engineering attribute, definitely start early and iterate for effective localization, because when you do that, you, will, you are able to take into consideration the design nuances much early on in the entire life cycle. Do not miss on quality. Quality is definitely key. It is definitely critical. So make sure you set aside ample time for this piece of quality in your localization process. As discussed at the very start, the potential that the global markets bring into the table is huge. So just the Indic and the Southeast Asian market, we're looking at a $300 billion market by 2025. Do not miss on this. Plan effectively and march forward to build an application of global reach. We, for instance, again, I speak out of experience, that we've been helping several organizations in their journey towards globalization, taking products to international markets. And if there's anything that we can help you with in this journey, be it design validations, cultural expertise, native language acumen, software quality in this journey, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We are happy to connect you. Thank you so much for joining us this last hour. I will pass it on to Vasindra right now to see what questions may have come in, in the last one. Thanks, Rajni and Irfan. That was definitely indeed an uh, insightful uh, session. Um, let's take up uh, a few questions now that we've received. Uh, the first question is, is it necessary to translate UI string to give support in Indic and C markets? How about giving enablement level support only? So it's not necessary to translate uh, UI. Uh, so it depends on your product. So if your product is going to be used by masses, for example, digital apps or any other general utility apps that is going to be used by mass masses, then in that case, definitely you need to localize your UI in these uh, languages. But if your product is for niche uh, market for professionals, for example, that is used for media professionals or any other professionals, so generally professionals in Indic and Southeast Asian market they are they know english and they are very good in english so they don't require the user interface in their native languages the english ui will be sufficient for them but they need strong support of enablement so that they can write their own native text and they can uh, create presets or they can type uh, and or in and do input of all sorts of special characters of their languages so and that that support is quite enough for them so it depends on your uh, product what sort of product you have uh, it, I, either it is going for the for professionals or is it going for you going to be used by masses all right the second one is there any automation tool to test apps in these locales since uh, these are the emerging market and the localization in this market is altogether a new phenomena and now uh, lots of global companies are now focusing so far there is no any comprehensive localization tool but there are some tools for testing uh, for testing purpose only to test uh, the applications and uh, all sets of characters that are used in this uh, uh, in this market but there is no comprehensive automation tool so that it can localize your product in one go in that particular market. Rajini, would you like to have? I want to chime in here. As the automation, as we all know, is only as smart as we design it to be. Um, and localization is one which has a lot of nuances associated with the software elements or the cultural elements. So down the line, possibly we could have some machine learning algorithms uh, artificial intelligence based solutions which are able to bring in uh, more power in the space of automation. But this is one which is so cognitive in nature that I doubt that there's going to be 100% automation. We 
the human intelligence is going to be very difficult to do this. Um, so, so automation can be an enabler to bring in some amount of uh, repeatedness into the task, some amount of use of translation. But end to end, um, I doubt if we're going to have anything in touch. All right. Uh, the last question for the session. Does QA and Potec have experts for all languages in these markets that you've been talking about? Yes, we do have uh, language experts for these markets and most of them uh, we use their services in-house. So we have in-house team also and we also use crowdsource uh, model. So Rajini, could you, can you tell yeah, me? Uh, so what I want to add here is, uh, see again an organization like QA and Potec which is services based, the advantage that we bring in is the scale and flexibility. Uh, just as I had mentioned in, in, in one of my takeaway points that it may be difficult for other companies to have all of this expertise internally. As a services organization, we are able to afford to do that because we work with a bunch of companies. For several of these large fortune companies, we continue to be their platform utilization vendor. So there is ongoing work year round because of which we are able to justify and keep that expertise internally. That is point number one. Point number two, we've also partnered with a lot of native language experts globally from crowdsource testing efforts. We have a platform called Bhagmani.com. Uh, we've been one of the early ones to write a book on the topic globally about leveraging the power of crowd in software testing. So taking in uh, cues from all of these, we are able to both maintain the native language expertise internally in the company for most languages, as well as partner with the crowd. So, between that expertise internally and the external crowd, we're pretty much able to cover for all of the locales globally that organizations are looking to localize into. So as I said, if there's anything, you know, it could be, um, you know, where you reach out to us saying, hey, we, we just need some training expertise, we need some help with, uh, you know, more detailed sessions for stakeholders and engineering teams, some design validations, quality related checks, or, you know, verifying the native language translation, whatever the case may be, we have that scale, bandwidth, and flexibility. So happy to connect with you guys. Uh, you know, feel free to reach out, and uh, we'll certainly look forward. Thank you, everyone, for taking out time and uh, joining us for this webinar on localization opportunities in Indic and Southeast Asian languages. Uh, once we end the webinar, you will uh, receive a short survey and we would really appreciate if you could please take a few minutes to provide your valuable feedback. In case you have any further questions, uh, you can write to us at info at qainfotech.com. I'll repeat that, I-N-F-O, info at the rate q-a-i-n-f-o-t-e-c-h.com or visit our website qainfotech.com. We wish you the very best in your journey to make your global brand local. Thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody.